Hey again guys and welcome back. It is 2021. I've got a bunch of packages. I forgot what's in most of them because the mail has been really slow. And then we've got this one which is an unexpected package and we're just going to have to see on the label where it came from. But that's going to be the last one. Let's start with a different one. First one up is this one here, it's Toy Parts and Accessories, and this one's from October 29th, came in December 16th, um, it is right now January something, um, it is right now January 16th, so I don't actually remember what this was from a month ago, it is uh, $14, let's see what we've got. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, these things are actually something I was concerned that they weren't in yet. But they are in. Okay. Well, that's good. I guess, you see, I forgot about them so long that, um, yeah, I basically was concerned they weren't here. So, my Patreons know I have a project that I'm working on and these are for that project um, I'm gonna have to do some testing with certain things uh, I can't tell you guys too much it will go on a brushless motor these guys are Gemfan branded uh, 6042 so they should be 6 inches in diameter and uh, 42 uh, 4.2 inches of when you turn this it'll want to push the air or pull itself forward uh, 6.2 inches. So I'm really glad I've got these. I actually thought I'd have to order some more because I didn't have them, but turns out they were in my mail pile. And obviously I must have known that they're here because I put the, the numbers on it. So yeah, that just shows you, uh, um, like I actually forget what I ordered. So yeah, this was very expensive, $14 for a bunch of these, but I, I need these for that project, uh, which you guys will find out about in under a month, I think. It's almost, it's getting to the point where it's going to come together pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. I will do some uh, thrust testing. You guys will probably see thrust testing before the project is released, so you can also look forward to that. So yeah, we should have four... Eight. Yeah, we have eight propellers. These are for quadcopters, typically. Not in this case. Um, but there are only four I can use because they are reversed direction. Actually, I can reverse the direction. Yeah, maybe I can use all eight. But there we go. So I've got these now. Hopefully these produce enough thrust. Um, we'll have to see on a thrust video, which, yeah, I think I've got the rig still set up for, so that should be perfect. Make sure you're subscribed. Next one up is this one. This is from, um, this was an e-packet delivery, so I don't have a description on it, but uh, November 23rd to January 4th, and this was $21.01. I spent quite a bit of money on this. I wonder what the heck it is. Oh, okay, I remember now. Yeah. Come on. Wow, this is really well packed. Um, let's see. Try to cut this without cutting myself or the stuff inside. There we go. So, what this is. Uh, this is a harness that goes in my Volvo. I drive a 01 Volvo V70 wagon. And what it does is it adds auxiliary audio and Bluetooth to the stock radio system. I really do not like how uh, stock radio systems, when you remove them and put an aftermarket one, it looks very ugly. I like the OEM controls. Um, this Volvo has a fantastic um, sound system. Uh, it's got a fantastic amplifier, but it's old. It's from 2001. It does not have Bluetooth, nor does it have auxiliary. 
and this should add both of them. So basically, this just goes, so you unplug your radio, you plug that connector into there, and you plug this into the back of the radio, and then your car thinks it has a 6 CD changer. So this thing will act like the 6 CD changer, and then you can just plug your auxiliary in, and you get that audio. You can't, on most of these vehicles, you can't just plug uh, an auxiliary into the, you know, right, left, and uh, right, left, and ground connections because you need the electronics in here to tell the radio that there is a CD changer installed. Now, I plan on actually getting the, whatever this box does, I plan on getting that information for other people who want to DIY it, but I couldn't find that information anywhere, so I just decided to order this. So, uh, if you guys are interested in seeing me work on my car, you know, the, the interior stuff, um, let me know. If not, I'll just install this off camera. Also, uh, it's not clear if this will plug into my specific radio, so even if you do want to see that video, it may not be seen in the end, but I mean, if you want to see it, let me know. Next one up is this one here. Uh, this is actually a repeat of another item I got, I think in the last mailbag video. So this was $7.50, November 11th to January 6th. Um, basically, I had to order it again because this one's from AliExpress and the seller wanted another like $4 for shipping after the purchase was done. So I figured it would just never show up. Also, I was not 100% sure how much of this stuff I needed. So I was just like, you know what, I'll order another one from eBay. And if it comes in, it comes in. If it doesn't, it does not. So this is it here. So this is thermal tape. So it's a adhesive, which is a thermal conductive. Now you see, you get my fingerprints because of all the ink from me uh, hiding the, uh, the, the labels there. Um, it's super thin, but it does have a little bit of thickness. And uh, I built that water cooling system that you guys saw. And so now I'll get to be able to put my thermoelectric coolers on top and we can start doing some temperature testing. So yeah, this is gonna be part of that. Now that I've got two rolls, I also, because I really need this for a specific project, I also am more than happy to use some up on the tech projects and see what kind of thermal conductivity this thing has. So yeah, gonna be pretty cool. Make sure you're subscribed for that. Next one up, we've got these two here. I think these two are sort of related. So I will open them up together. And that also gets us close to our um, special package here. So this one, $3.76, October 31st to December 18th. This one, uh, $8.48. This one comes from November 17th, delivered on December 15th. Um, this one's from the dropshipper, so there's no details. This one, Nylon Hexnut M3. Oh, that's, that's a little spoilery now, isn't it? So there's one. And there is another. I'll zoom you guys in though, these things are pretty small. So what these things are, these are M3 nuts, which I have. This is my uh, box of hardware here. I've got some M3 nuts, but these are special because these here are Nylock. So I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but they have like a nylon ring in there. And the nylon ring, what happens is when you thread your bolt into it, the nylon ring gets warm and deforms and then cools down onto the threads. So it actually um, sort of locks itself in place. It won't shake itself loose. My experience, these things work a lot better than, let's say, um, lock washers. I don't believe in lock washers at all. And so this is my kit of hardware here. And these will just join this kit probably about here. And here I've got, you know, all the way up to, I think these are M6. 
Uh, no, they must be M5. These are M4, M3. I'm starting to build up the M3 hardware stack here. And these lock nuts will go either here or here. I think everyone should have a box of bolts like that. So anyways, these are M3. They will fit well into here. They should. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, they fit perfectly. That's excellent. Not very expensive. Three dollars. I got a. I think I got a hundred of them. These here are a little bit more complex. I mean, they're the same kind of thing. They're a nut, but these are what are called T nuts. So, not sure again if you're going to be able to see this, but it has like a flange and it's got teeth. Now, generally, these are made to be pounded into wood, and then you come with the the, the bolt from the other side. Uh, these are M5 sized, should be at least, yep, yeah, they're M5 sized, there we go. But I think these are often overlooked for 3D printed stuff, because I feel like I can easily mold or easily design uh, cavities that these teeth go into, and then you have a really big spread of, you can spread the load over a very big section here. And especially being an M5, I mean, I feel like you can get a good squeeze on parts. You can hold things together pretty well. Uh, this one here seems quite crooked. You can see that. But again, it wouldn't matter. It'd be to hold parts together. So these are M5. Impossible to find these things locally. Uh, even the Canada-wide distributor of fasteners don't have these. So I picked them up on eBay. 100 of them for $8. Uh, I think 100 of them will be a lifetime supply for me. So I'm not too worried about that. I just need them in stock. So when I have projects, I'm ready to go. So on to the next one. And the moment you've all been waiting for, I hope the pun becomes obvious now. This is an unexpected package because it is from an unexpected maker. So Sion, the unexpected maker himself, uh, sent me this following our conversation on the podcast. If you haven't heard the, his episode of the podcast, uh, check it out right up here. It's a fantastic episode. Um, you know, I've never had any dud guests and Sion is certainly not one of them. So that's great. He is awesome. He sent this to my PO box. Um, I don't know what's in here. So it is unexpected in a way, but I did know it was coming. It took uh, months to get here. Uh, you can blame the malware 19 going around. Um, he sent this out very quickly, and I'm excited to see what he has sent. I'm not sure if there's a note or anything. First of all, uh, bubble mailer plus bubble wrap plus bubble wrap. So this guy takes his business seriously, which is fantastic. Uh, so we've got the Tiny Pico side-by-side -side three. Make something unexpected. Yep. Um, hopefully not fire in my case. Um, IPS display shield. Very nice. Oh, it's color. We're going to take a look at these. Uh, audio shield. Very nice. Oh, look, it even ships with a has a um, desiccant bag in there. And what do we have here? The Tiny Mighty ESP32 development board, the Tiny Pico itself. Oh yeah, with, oh look, at this is, this is quality. Hang on a second here. So for a channel that gets all of the stuff from China typically, uh, this is gonna be quite the treat because if you didn't know, uh, Sion, actually the colors are off. Let me just reset the camera. Yes, I could have edited it, but why bother? All right, so since I get most of my stuff from China, this should be quite a quality bump in the positive direction. So let's see here. This is the Tiny Pico himself. Now, if you didn't know, uh, Sion gets these this the blank circuit boards manufactured and then he has a pick and place machine that takes all these components 
uh, maybe I should zoom you in even, it takes all these components and puts them on the board and then he inspects them and then he puts it through a reflow oven and then he takes them out, he cleans them, he inspects them, uh, he tests them. This is all done in-house. The only thing that's external is the parts. He doesn't make the parts. I mean, we're, nobody's going to blame him for not having a silicon fab. And he doesn't make the circuit boards themselves, but he did, he did design them. And all of this is done in Australia. You know, aside from the Chinese components and the Chinese board. So that is pretty cool. This is an ESP32. Which one specifically? ESP32 Pico 84. So it is a super capable board. He's added, if I'm not mistaken, he's added some um, storage onto here so that you can run things like MicroPython and CircuitPython a lot easier because it requires a little bit more space. He does ship a couple of extra connectors with it. I'm not 100% sure what these are for. I have not done any research on it yet. So here we go, 32-bit dual core. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, it's got flash, it's got extra PS RAM. It's got an RGB LED on it. Wow, that's pretty neat. Um, USB plus serial UART for programming. An LDO regulator. LiPo battery management, built-in battery management, that's impressive. Power plan for low battery usage, JST pads on the back, supports PH and micro blade. GPIO, 14 GPIOs broken out, breadboard friendly. Very cool. So, oh yeah, here's the MicroPython, and it's also program programmable in the Arduino IDE. So, those of you that have been bothering me, to take up MicroPython. Um, this is what I've been waiting for. I was actually going to buy some, as should you, the website is in the description. I was actually gonna buy a micro um, from Sion following our conversation and, um, and then learn MicroPython. And he just went on and sent it to me. I didn't have to buy it at all. Um, now, if I, I mean, if I'm doing multiple pro projects, I might need more of these. Probably going to buy more. So here is the audio shield. Hmm. Just see here. Okay, so that looks like a buzzer. Yeah, ex uh, there we go. And you can put an external speaker. Does this thing have an, is that an amplifier right there? I'm not sure. I have to read the documentation, which I believe you can get on the unexpectedmaker.com website. There we go. Audio in, amp power. Very cool. Tiny Pico Audio Shield. The IPS display will be pretty nice for interfacing with external stuff or having an external interface I should say for the tiny Pico itself. I figure since it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth I could make some sort of weather station with it. That would be a pretty nice first project because don't don't expect great things uh, because I will be learning MicroPython. I, uh, I am not well versed in coding. There is the... I, wow this is this thing is tiny. Look at the size of that. So it's not stuck down and I'm assuming that's because you get to choose where you want to put it. There's the, whoops, there's the driver and stuff on the back. Very nice. And the last one is this side-by-side. -side. I believe this is to have Three tiny Picos. Oh, there's 3D printed parts. So this is the bottom side. So I believe this is to have three tiny Picos. Yeah, and sharing uh, power and ground and stuff so you don't have to distribute it. I'm not 100% sure. I have not looked at the documentation yet. 
but look at that. It's got it's got 3D printed parts. I'll shine it just right. There you go. You should be able to see it now. That is neat. And I have to say, these boards are super clean. There is no residue of anything on them. Everything looks very professional. That's awesome. So yeah, if you guys have a couple of ideas for simple starter projects I can do with the Tiny Pico, uh, I'm going to run example code first, but if you've got anything interesting that I should give a shot at, that was awkward, let me know in the comments below. I might take your suggestion, I might not. Either way though, I need to learn MicroPython. I think it's time. And so that's it. This here makes up um, the first mailbag of 2021. I want to give a special thanks to Sion, the unexpected maker. There is There are links in the description. Go check out his stuff. If you want the world's smallest uh, ESP32 development board, just go check out his website and pick it up. This is all designed, picked and placed and soldered and tested by Sion himself in Australia. He's a great guy. Listen to the podcast episode. Uh, and also a special thanks to my Patreon patrons. Um, they're starting to become more of you. Which is really endearing. I, I don't know I don't know why you guys feel the need to support me, but just know that it is incredibly appreciated. Been struggling with some time management, been struggling with some personal problems lately, and you guys uh, make all of this worth it. I'm really happy to have you guys. And uh, if you guys want to join my Patreons as being the coolest people on the planet, there's also a link in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, let's hope 2021 is better than 2020.